Hello, I hope you're well. So this week's video is going to be on how do we know we're deficient in vitamin A in our skin and also the benefits of medical needling in assisting with correcting this deficiency. So a lot of you know I'm currently doing my medical needling treatments. So I'm only one down, five to go. And I'm spacing these ones weekly. So seven days apart for uh, optimum results for what I want to achieve. So we'll get back to talking about medical needling, but we're going to start with this conversation that a lot of people, I think, um, benefit so much from understanding that our skin is predominantly made of vitamin A. And unless you are topically applying it, you are deficient. So that's the easy answer. So the question is, how do I know I'm deficient? And the answer is, if you're not applying it. So we know from since we're born, we're gonna go out into light, um, that depletes the stores of vitamin A. And if you think of them are like little batteries that have a shelf life, but every time you go out, that battery is being used and it's depleted. And the body, uh, most of us don't eat a ton of vitamin A orally, which means that that goes to um, prioritizes to gut and liver and growth functions. Um, so it doesn't give it to the largest, largest organ. The body is incredibly wise and it will choose an organ that keeps you alive, like your pumping heart <laughs> and your lungs and your gut. So it's not gonna give it straight away to your skin even though it needs it. So this is where we get to bulletproof our body by giving the skin directly its needs so then it can maintain function or correct function, which is what I'm working on right now. Every year I do a course of medical needling to my skin and there's a really good reason why it works. Um, I combine medical needling with five separate Environ treatments. Um, so I kind of add them all together and every year I tweak them to improve them. And there is a thing called practice makes perfect. So I'm 25 years as a therapist and I feel very lucky to say that because I can't think of anything else in the world I'd rather do. Um, but today I get to work with very, very um, amazing skin students that are very dedicated um, to making lifestyle changes, what they apply their skin, what supplements they take and lifestyle choices to correct the past damage from the vitamin A depletion. So when we're born, because we're born with this vitamin A, what we've learned when the age of 15, which is pretty young, right? 15 is not, not that old. Um, really sadly, our, our body dramatically reduces the amount of receptors on a cell wall. So vitamin A actually needs a vitamin A receptor to enter the cell. So without that receptor, you're just going to have vitamin, vitamin A floating around the outside of the cell. So a lot of people understand the word retinol. Um, retinol is the alcohol form of vitamin A and it's an irritant often to the skin when applied because it exfoliates the skin. It only makes up 3% of a cell, actually a percentage of a cell is made of a storage form. Retinol is the only ester of vitamin A that does not classify as a sunscreen. It's an exfoliant, so it actually makes you more sensitive to light. Where storage forms, fascinatingly enough, um, become a storage form of, they say scientifically, um, the stats are 25 plus, which is pretty cool. It doesn't work as a sunscreen to stop you from burning, but it stops you from aging and it stops a lot of our skin problems. So. We know that skin cancer cannot survive in a vitamin A rich dermis. The problem is that dermis is receptors. If you're coming to the party at 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, those receptors are pretty well corroded and we need to start the journey to uncorrode them. If you have a door with a lock on it, you are not gonna get very far without the key. So there are just receptors, um, are the locks, and when they're rusty, doesn't matter, what sort of key you're holding, it's not gonna turn the lock to enter. Now, inside that cell is our DNA. That's where the cell grows from. So when the DNA has become damaged from radiational light, um, we are seeing damaged problems coming up to the surface. Kind of cool, right? So when I see a problem here, let's say my rosacea has come back on my nose, it keeps flaring. And that's one of my reasons why I'm doing my needling right now is because I'm, 
basically growing this temporal wound and then my body goes um, it stimulates what's called fibroblast cells so that's the, the factory that makes my collagen and elastin and also my natural fillers in my skin and then it literally improves by improving the structure by thickening it and laying down new sheets of collagen and elastin so i'm literally regrowing my face from the inside out and that will actually after i do six sessions for the next 12 months with clever programming and skin treatments that tissue will regenerate and i'm going to have a younger more efficient skin so the products i apply on top are going to be more efficient to getting inside the skin so vitamin a has higher when i apply the same dose in six weeks <laughs> my skin i just noticed the products become so so much more efficient and it's it's kind of a common thing we all talk about and um at this time of year i, I do the before and afters for the 12 months for my students and it is pretty cool to see and you can see those that got to do their needling 12 months ago and those that didn't you can see an imp much a greater yield of improvement in those that got their needling done um so it's it's kind of exciting because it's not always what you apply it's what you absorb uh that goes both with your gut and with your skin and skin is designed to keep like ducks feathers the products out so we are so lucky to have uh, access to cosmetic chemists who have cleverly pre-digested our skincare so it can absorb but if the structure um, as we age, it gets thinner, it compounds, and the network, the junctions get tighter. So it doesn't matter how good quality ingredients you're applying, if the junctions look like this under a microscope, you're probably going to be using a really good quality moisturizer, but we need them to look like this. The cells need to be more separated and thicker so they can get in through the junctions or the layers of the skin. And then if those beautiful receptor sites are, are unrusted, they can enter and work on the DNA. And once you have built up those batteries, of vitamin A when you've recharged them you're going to notice a lot of your skin ailments do dissipate disappear um, it's easier to look healthy um, peace of mind for me is I've spent a lot of time outside in the sun and I have a lot of skin problems that maybe you don't know about because I'm really good <laughs> at treating them but needling keeps them at bay for 12 months every year so I'm very grateful for that um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of idea about vitamin A and why we use storage forms above just retinol. Retinol has a place like everything in the food kingdom, but it is not the only form of vitamin A that we should be focusing on if you want to get optimal results. Because if you're constantly using an irritant, an exfoliant that's sitting outside the cell and irritating it, you give up. And this is vitamin A is the long game. It is not the short game. The, the data now that we are seeing from people using it, even starting at the age of 80, it is amazing to see what it does on rebuilding the skin. I, um, I do know one patient's testimony. Um, she started, I think, in the late 70s of using vitamin A. And uh, I think I got to hear her testimony in her late 80s. So um, she was saying she, she was so grateful that she started even at that age. So you can see why a kid who is under the age of 15 can start on a very high dose of vitamin A with less to zero irritation. I've never had a child be irritated to vitamin A but adults all the time, yeah. So an adult, we have to be really clever with how we give you vitamin A. We have to start at a level your skin can tolerate and we have to blend it with other loving antioxidants and peptides to help nurture the skin. And then it's the daily dosing. If you want a muscle to grow, it does not grow by wishing it into existence. You have to apply pressure. And this is where um, when you get to have medical needling, it's a little bit of... A treat because it's you, you've done the hard work you've built the stores of antioxidants up in your skin and now this is kind of the the marathon where you get to run the actual race and you get to put that pressure on the body and then for the next year it will keep paying you back in dividends because it's regenerating itself from the inside out which is it's exciting so I wanted to um, send you a lot of love, give you a little information about this one today and um, let me know if you have any questions or comments. All right. Bye, bye for now. Bye.